uh, your boss, the president, uh, as a candidate, called the department the most corrupt agency in the United States and said the fate to fix it is, quote, by getting Trump elected president. At one point, he said it was, quote, the most incompetently run agency in the United States. You were second in command at the time. I know you've been down this road before. You're now in charge. Uh, I recall in the past seeing patient satisfaction surveys that put you guys off the charts. There was pretty overwhelming belief that things were going well. The issues over wait times and, and people getting access to care obviously manifested itself in more recent years. But have you talked to him about what he thought was so incompetent about the agency? Yeah, we, we spend a lot of time talking about this. Uh, we have a pretty candid relationship. And, you know, my belief is, is that if you don't talk about the problems and you don't put them out there, you're not going to be able to find solutions. You're not going to be able to ask for help in finding solutions. So I think that the president's criticism of VA and the, expressing the dissatisfaction with the way that it's been running and needing to address problems that have spanned multiple administrations for decades. So I don't believe that he thinks that this is any one particular administration's problem, but he wants to get these issues fixed and he wants to put them on the table. And so I share with him the view that the VA has a lot of problems and the VA has to take those problems seriously if they're gonna fix them. And uh, being candid about those problems is my approach as well. It's why I came out and said, we have 13 areas of high risk. If we don't fix, the VA will continue to struggle. And so uh, I think the president has recognized the progress that we've made so far, but knows, and I agree with him, we have a long way to go before we can declare that the VA is a system that is truly serving optimally the veterans who deserve our services. So we so rarely, especially at the Post, get a chance to talk to cabinet secretaries these mm -hmm. days. Uh, give us a sense then, uh, when you meet with him, what, what it's like to have a meeting with the president. Is he asking a lot of questions? Is he, is he bringing you uh, stats that he's discovered? Are you presenting them to him? Is he curious, asking a lot of questions, or what? Yeah, uh, first of all, it's not atypical for, for me to get a call in the evening that he has a question that he wants to find out about, that he's read a paper, I don't know, the Washington Post, but, <laughs> but uh, that, that he's read something. We suspect he's read us. Yes, okay. <laughs> and, uh, or he's seen something on TV and, he, and he's like, what's going on with that? I want to understand this better and what are we doing about it? So he is very inquisitive. So he's calling you at like 10 o'clock at night after watching something on TV saying, what, what's this about? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you see that come in. And you go, oh, yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so worse than you have to wake up everyone else. Right? The reason I have to read the Washington Post. Well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, but but um, but no, he he's uh, he's clearly this is a topic that he's passionate about, that he's paying attention to, that he thinks is important, and so therefore he has a lot of questions and he has a lot of thoughts and opinions about how to do things. But I do have to say that one of the things that um, in terms of his management style, my management style, he makes clear the objectives and what we have to get done. And then he allows me to do the job. And he's clear that if I'm not getting the job done, he's going to let me know and that there will be consequences. But he allows me to go out and to uh, get things done in the way that I believe they need to get done. 